People are often passionate about what they believe, but how thorough are they about actually checking the facts? Sometimes the impact of public perception and what passes for common knowledge actually overshadow the truth. Inside Lehman explores the slippery slope of pseudoscience. If you ask people to give examples of something that they just know is true, the details about how they arrived at those so-called truths may pose many questions. Was there any evidence? How did they reach their conclusions? Was it real at all? How many people here have ever read an article? Professor Massimo Piliucci teaches a course that focuses on critical thinking. His approach blends two very different perspectives. He is the chair of the Department of Philosophy at Lehman College, but he also has a 25-year history as a scientist. One important area of study involves the human capacity for denial when a person is subjected to trauma. There are some people, for instance, who uh, lose one of their limbs, one of their, you know, an arm, and, uh, and the trauma is so strong that their brain literally refuses to believe that the harm is the arm is gone. The gap between evidence-based knowledge and popular assumptions can be huge, so much so that Professor Pellucci has written a book entitled Nonsense on Stilts, How to Tell Science from Bunk. First, the basic question, what is bunk? If it happened that uh, you learned about a particular belief from a figure of authority or somebody who was very dear to you, or uh, you have arrived at a certain conclusion uh, because of traumatic events, those are situations where it is very hard for people to let go of beliefs even though they may be demonstrably untrue because there is an, a large emotional involvement. In this type of discussion, students inevitably find themselves challenging society's beliefs as well as some of their own. The reactions may include everything from optimism to pessimism or even a willingness to step outside of what they believe in to take a closer look. I first learned about critical thinking and reasoning through Sherlock Holmes when I read that very young. Uh, then I spoke to one of some of my favorite teachers growing up and they kind of put me on the right path. I think critical thinking is very important um, because I feel like it pro protects you from outside influences, from being led um, astray by an authority figure in, as opposed to an expert. So, if you're seeking knowledge to tell the difference between fact and fiction, where do you turn? Generally speaking, from, um, from books, um, sometimes from the newspaper, but I don't always trust even the New York Times. It's a compendium of sources. Internet, carefully, very carefully. Uh, certain books that have a rep an author has a reputation for uh, factual, and they, uh, and they can be cross-checked easy. I do not rely on a single website. I, I check a different website. In our daily lives, we are willing to regard some people as experts because they are trained in a specialized field or have a track record of prior success. People cite particular sources for health care, tax preparation, technical expertise, or even divine guidance from their house of worship. Further complicating the issue, people may turn to experts reluctantly when all else fails. Sometimes the ego takes over and be like, I could do it, man. You know, and they try to force this in. Instead of using the compressor, they use their man's strength to force things in. And, you know, then that's when problems get bigger and bigger and bigger. Then, so as far as people do in the street, it's the ego. Sometimes the ego stretch. And they go, I could do it, I could do it. A lot of times they do. But sometimes they don't. When they don't, they got to see me. Now that practically everyone has a computer, some people think they know how everything works. At this local computer repair shop, the technicians had to endure a customer who came in with broken hinges on his laptop. Well, I replaced the hinges, but he believes that the power button needs to be replaced. Now, I showed it to him a couple of times. I even had to open the entire computer to pinpoint it. But well, he still didn't believe me. I'm just left unhappy. If you're interested in medicine, you ask your doctor. If you're interested in, in, uh, in science, you know, go to a, a well, uh, a reputable website like Scientific American, for instance. Just because you walk into a public library, for instance, I wouldn't uh, suggest to pick up a random book at a public library and think that it's a good one because it's in the public library. Experts? I'm the expert for my daily life. Others honestly call it as they see it, admitting that it's hard to know what to believe. I get up in the morning scared that I really don't know 
what I know because I'm getting it from secondhand sources. I have a worker, a co-worker that I work with. He's always talking about uh, aliens and how he thinks UFOs and everything is real. But uh, at the same time, he doesn't really have any proof. And if he does see this, I would love for him to show me that proof. As we navigate through daily life, pausing to think about the origin of a belief may lead to a better understanding. Is it based on fact? Did somebody else package that point of view and plant it as a suggestion? Is it a convenient and comfortable belief because it avoids greater complexities? Most of all, is there a compelling reason to accept it or to challenge it? Laura Bowden, Inside Lehman.